Hello everyone, we are back with another video on macro scale module of Embrava. Today in this video we will learn about computational aspects when setting up the macro scale simulation in Embrava. In Embrava we have a separate section called simulation settings to set up our mesh size, core number and parallelization schemes. Before moving on to the GUI we will first look at the theory part. First we will look at the meshing part. So in macro scale module we solve equation of for fluid dynamics heat and heat transfer, the solver uses FEM scheme to solve the discretized differential equations. We first discretize the domain into small cells and each cell will have its size. Smaller the cell size, more accurately it can capture the spatial variation of properties such as pressure, velocity and temperature. So in this image, we can see our computational domain discretized into small cells the solver does the calculation for each cell for each time step. In this image, we can see a melt pool is being formed and we are visualizing the heat distribution. The temperature varies between each cell and each cell will have the absolute value of temperature. We can visualize it, visualize it in this another image where we have plotted absolute values. The cell size should be smaller enough so that the smoother gradient of the properties can be calculated between each cell. Larger cell size does not hold good for straight line approximation and gives inaccurate solution. Next, we will discuss the current number. Current number, which is also known as a CFL number, is a stability criteria when solving the differential equation numerically. Current number tells us if the stability criteria is maintained. Ideally, the current number should be less than, less than or equal to 1. Violating this will make the solution unstable and hence the solution will not converge. In Prava, we use maximum current number limit which is less than 1 to maintain the stability criteria. The formula for current number is u del t by del h. We use the maximum current number limit to calculate the time step dynamically so that the stability criteria is maintained. In Prava. The time step calculation considers few more things such as temperature change, temperature change rate, phase change, phase change rate, etc. In Prava, the delta t is a function of current number, delta x is your cell size, velocity, the rate of melting and the rate of uh, vaporization. You can see when we calculate the delta t as a function of current number, del, uh, current number, uh, cell size and velocity, our current number in solver crosses current number, number limit 1 and it goes uh, beyond 5. But when we use delta t as a function of a few more ar arguments, delta t by delta t, you can see in this graph when we use delta t as a function of current number, uh, our cell size and velocity. The current number crosses the limit and it goes beyond 5. This will give us an in inaccurate solution. But when we use current number as a function of few more inputs, uh, which is a rate of change of temperature, a rate of melting and rate of evaporation, we get current number maximum, uh, which is 0 0.6. Using this approach, we will get accurate solutions. Why, why do we calculate a dynamic time step? because a larger time step will give us a smaller clock time which is a total simulation time we require to run the simulation and current number uh, greater than 1 will give us inaccurate and unstable simulation and coarser mesh will give us low accuracy results so to maintain all these things we calculate a delta t dynamically and we get a, a solution solution which are uh, equivalent to the actual experimental results next we have parallelization so for parallelization, we are in AM Prava, we ask uh, number of cores. So there are two terms used in parallelization, which are processor and core. So the processor is a central processing unit and core is a single processing, processing unit within the CPU. When we give a value 24 here, our whole computational domain will be divided into 24 equal parts and each part will be sent to the separate core for computation. Now let's move on to the GUI. I will create a new project. And I will save it in the documents. Inside macro scale, we have 
simulation settings here we can give a value for our accuracy value for maximum colon number value for performance and value for data center request and also we have number of cpu cores we want to use so the accuracy is nothing but it calculates the the cell size so higher the accuracy smaller will be the cell size so let's use a 30 as a accuracy and let's save it after saving you will be seeing the mesh size written in the terminal which is 715 micron now if i increase the accuracy to 60 and save it my sale size is now 3.75 micron which is smaller Similarly, I can change maximum coron number. The value of maximum coron number from here will be used to calculate the dynamic time step. The performance is nothing but reverse of the accuracy. If we increase the performance, the sale size will reduce. Now our sale size is 4.5 micron. Using both scales for accuracy and performance, we will get a higher bandwidth for giving our mesh sizes. In this system, we have maximum available cores 8. We can use any number of cores between 1 to 8. Here I am using 6 number of cores and saving it. So here I can see my domain, domain decomposition in x, y and z direction. So in x direction, my domain has been divided into 3 parts. In y direction, there is only one part. Uh, total uh, six number of uh, cores will be used for the computation. Let's keep an accuracy 30, performance at 50, and core number at 0 0.5. And let's save it. Go back, do save all, and I will run the simulation. Now it is pre processing and generating mesh. So, depending on our simulation setting, it will create a mesh. Now, powder preparation is being happening, which is uh, calculated using the DM solver. After powder bit preparation, the C, uh, macro scale solver, the CFD solver will be will, will start. We can visualize our domain using show result. So this is our solid. Uh, this is our solid uh, substrate and the powder. If you want to visualize the whole domain, I will turn on microcell.com. So this is our complete domain. And if I plot surface with edges, I can see my mesh. So you can see uh, cells are divided into small. A domain is divided into a small number of cells. Now, if I reduce the opacity, I will be able to see the dec domain decomposition. So you can see there are six uh, sections in which domain has been divided and each section will be sent to a different core for computation. So all the uh, six sections will be calculated parallelly reducing the uh, required computational time. Now I will terminate this project, I will go back to simulation settings and now I will reduce my accuracy to 10 and I will reduce the uh, number of cores to 4 and I will save it, I will go back and I will save all again and I will run the solver, so it is now generating the mesh. 
after mesh generation we can visualize the domain now we can visualize the domain So I want to see the zero time step. So I will turn off skip zero time and I will turn on this macro scale dot form and this is my domain. And now you can see we have a larger cell size. Similarly, I will build the opacity. You can see now the domain has been divided into four equal parts. So the data saving frequency is for saving our simulation data. So how frequently we want to save our data uh, that input is given from the uh, data saving frequency. If I increase the data saving frequency, my simulation data will be saved more frequently. If I reduce the simulation uh, data saving frequency, frequency, the uh, simulation data will uh, be uh, will not be saved saved frequently and uh, it will uh, it will consume less amount of memory. For creating high fidelity animations, we can save uh, data more frequently, uh, giving a high data saving frequency value. So this is uh, it for today. In next tutorials, we will learn about microstructure model. Thank you.